Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nick here from Windy City Astrophotography. Quick video today, I want to tell you a little bit about this telescope that I've been messing around with recently. This is the StarSense Explorer LT114 scope from Celestron. And I think this is a perfect telescope for anybody out there watching that might be just getting into visual observing. Maybe a newcomer to the hobby, or maybe you're out there looking for a gift for somebody that's uh, getting into space, wondering what kind of telescope to get them. I think this is pretty great. Even if you're a total beginner to backyard astronomy, you can set this telescope up and be seeing things in space your first night out. Now, full disclosure, Celestron sent me this telescope to keep. They paid me to make a video about this telescope, showing its features and how to set it up and how easy it was to use. Here's the thing. This is not that video. That's already made. It's on the internet. You can find it elsewhere. This video is not paid for. I'm under no obligation to make this, but I still had this telescope sitting around and it was so fun to use and such a unique experience, something I wasn't expecting, that I wanted to make another video just for this channel talking a little bit more about the features. Now, this is not a telescope for astrophotography. This is a beginner optical visual observing telescope. Although you could probably get a pretty good view of the moon through it and get a good picture with a smartphone. If you're a beginning amateur astronomer just starting to get into the hobby, or if you're trying to find a gift for somebody that is a budding space nerd in your life, this is a great scope to go with, or really any of the scopes in the StarSense Explorer line from Celestron. They have several of them, both reflectors and refractors, at a bunch of different price points. But the thing that makes this experience kind of unique, and was new for me certainly, and allows you to get out there with no previous experience and see things in the sky your first night out, is the fact that this scope interfaces with your smartphone. Now, this is not a smart telescope. There's no computerized mount, you're not polar lining, there's no drive or motor of any kind in the side of it. And yet you're able to use your smartphone with the telescope to navigate the sky. So how do you do that? This little cradle on top is where you put your smartphone. The StarSense dock has a mirror inside of it, which the smartphone camera is looking at. So whatever is in front of the telescope, that area of the sky is shown in the mirror in view of the smartphone's camera, and it's able to use that and essentially plate solve to figure out where it's pointed in the sky. There's a quick calibration feature in the StarSense app that's best done in the daytime. And then after that calibration, your smartphone is able to calculate the telescope's position in real time basically taking a picture of the part of the sky where the telescope is pointed. It's figuring out what those star patterns are. And then as the scope moves, you can see on screen where the scope is pointed. Now, to be honest, when I first heard about this, I was pretty skeptical. It sounded a little bit like a gimmick. And honestly, from light polluted skies like Chicago, would this even work? Would the smartphone camera be able to see enough stars to be able to plate solve and figure out where it was pointed? Well, I'll tell you what, I set it up according to the instructions took it outside and went for it, and it worked right out of the box, no problem. So how it works, you select a celestial object to observe in the app, and directional arrows appear on your smartphone that will guide you to point the telescope at the celestial object's precise location. And it's accurate. When the bullseye turns green, the target is ready to view in the telescope's eyepiece. I was surprised by how fun this app was to use. Even for somebody like me who knows where these things are, I can point at that planet or maybe star hop to a star cluster pretty easily. But using this app, it was pretty awesome. And there's a great list of objects in there as well. And in fact, it does a curated list in case you're not sure what to look at your first night out or just on any random night. It curates a best of list for your location at that particular time. Now, I'm pretty familiar with telescopes, so I wondered if this would be as intuitive for somebody that was maybe a total newbie to telescopes, had never used one before. Well, she may not be a complete newbie, but newbie enough. I called my wife out while I was testing this out in the yard, and I had the scope pointed at a completely random part of the sky, and I explained to her, look, this app can show you where Jupiter is in the sky. And then I told her to go for it. I didn't walk her through it, I didn't really explain it. She went up, she searched for Jupiter in the app, and then followed those on-screen arrows, and had it pointed at Jupiter, and was viewing it through the eyepiece in under a minute. She was super impressed, and so was I. Now, I only got a chance to test this telescope so far in the light polluted skies, of Chicago. But next time I'm out doing some deep sky astrophotography imaging in a remote location from dark skies, I'm gonna throw this scope in the van as well, and I'm excited to see what I'm able to spot from there. The aperture or opening to the telescope is 114 millimeters, 
It's about four and a half inches. So pretty decent light collecting power from any sky. You're going to be able to get great views of craters on the moon. Planets as well, although it doesn't quite have the focal length to get really high magnification, but it does pretty well. I got some good views of Saturn's rings, the moons of Jupiter, and some of the cloud bands. Even from light polluted skies as well, you can find star clusters, globular clusters, open clusters, and even some of the bright nebulae. And depending on your level of light pollution, and certainly from darker skies, some of those dimmer nebulae and galaxies as well are going to start to come into view. Now, it's not all positives here. Yeah, this is an entry-level scope. So a few negatives that you should at least be aware of, but none of them are a deal breaker, I would say, with this particular scope. The tripod is not the best. It's not super sturdy. Now, I will say it's better than a lot of ones that I've seen being sold with entry-level scopes. It's definitely a step up from that. But if you're not careful, you can bump it. It's going to push the telescope off target and things like that. So it's just something to be aware of as you're uh, working around this setup. Now, there is an 8-inch and a 10-inch Dobsonian version of this. That's a lot more light collecting power, a lot more expensive as well. But with that Dobsonian mount, I would say that might be the way to go with this particular setup. This is just ready-made uh, for that sort of pointing and uh, smooth slewing with a Dobsonian version of this scope. Now, I will say the adjustment functions on this telescope's mount were actually quite nice. They allowed for some very fine adjustments to where the telescope was pointed. Now, the two eyepieces and the Barlow lens that come with the scope, they're not great quality. Now, they're not cheap. You can find some telescopes in gift shops and things like that that are cheap eyepieces and you're not going to see really anything. These are not that. I was able to get good views, as I said, of things like the rings of Saturn. However, they're not great. And I would say as you get into this hobby a little bit more, you're going to be wanting a little bit more quality. So you can upgrade to some slightly nicer eyepieces when you're ready for it. You're going to definitely notice a difference, but that's not something you have to do right away. Also, there's the fact that built into this design is the fact that there's a bright smartphone screen near your face. Even if you turn that all the way down, even if you use the red light filter that's built into the app, which is pretty nice, you're still not going to get it perfect and really nice dark adaptation for a lot of these dim objects especially if you're observing from a dark sky. However, from light polluted skies, if you're just out there learning the sky, you're not really that familiar, you're not going for the really dim fuzzies at the very beginning, it's going to be fine. It's a, a fair trade-off for this scope that's able to get you out there observing the night sky your first night out and hopefully getting you deeper into this amazing amateur astronomy hobby. So the Star Sense Explorer line from Celestron, this is a great way to dip your toe into this amazing hobby of observational astronomy. Or if you're looking for that gift for someone that's asking for a telescope, you're not sure what to get them, this is honestly a great way to go. And I do hope you check it out. I've got links below in the description for these scopes. And thanks for watching.